In this video, I will present the different elements that can be evaluated in an integrated surveillance system for antimicrobial use and resistance in relation to what is expected from such surveillance approach. I will also present how you can use the theory of change to explore the evaluation tools and approaches which can be suitable for your evaluation need. So first, let's present myself. So I'm Cécile Anizenslin, professor at the University of Montreal in Canada. I'm a veterinary epidemiologist trained in transdisciplinary research, and my research focuses on the design and evaluation of One Health approaches for zoonosis and AMR prevention and control. This video relates to Section 2 in the CoEval AMR Guidance website. So if you follow this link, it will bring you to the online material that I present in this video. As explained in the first introduction video, integrated surveillance of AMR and AMU at national or regional levels is a central component of our global efforts to prevent and control the development of antimicrobial resistance. However, evaluating an integrated surveillance system is different from evaluating other non-integrated surveillance systems. First, these systems are often complex, as one of their major goals is to combine the information collected from humans, different animal species, and sometimes from plants and other environmental sources to guide risk management decisions while using resources efficiently. So it's systemic, cross-sectoral, and multi-stakeholder in nature necessitates a collaborative approach that is not present in conventional domain-specific surveillance systems. Moreover, because of the complexity of the EMR problem, the benefits or value of such surveillance is often visible over a longer period of time. These aspects can complicate the evaluation of surveillance as not all evaluation frameworks and approaches are suitable to these particular features. So one way to structure the evaluation of an integrated surveillance system for AMR and AMU is to unpack its complexity by understanding the chain of events that is expected to result from the surveillance system. This chain of events is called the theory of change and can be conceptualized as the expected links between the program inputs, its activities, its direct outputs, and its immediate, intermediate, and ultimate outcomes. So for an integrated one health surveillance system uh, for AMR and AMU, we will have the inputs that are staff, funding, and infrastructure and then the flow of surveillance activities, so data collection, analysis, interpretation, and dissemination of the information. So in a one health surveillance system, we expect that these activities integrate components from humans, animals, and the environment. Also to achieve such goal, collaboration and shared governance between sectors and disciplines is needed. Now, what would be the outputs? So, of course, one major output is the information that can come from the integration of data. But also a multidisciplinary or One Health team of analysts and a One Health network of stakeholders composed of people that contribute to the production of information and who use the information produced by surveillance can also be considered as outputs of the system. Then the main immediate expected outcomes are an enhanced system understanding of the epidemiology of AMU and AMR at the human-animal environment interface, with early warning of emerging resistant microorganisms and an increased awareness in stakeholders and decision makers. These will contribute to inform interventions in particular cases, such as sanctions, for example, if any are planned, and in a broader perspective to policy and behavior changes, such as the ban or the reduction of the use of some antimicrobials in animal production. These should then lead to a reduction in AMR in humans, animals, and microorganisms circulating in the environment, and then to healthier animals, humans, and ecosystems, 
which are the ultimate outcomes of the whole system. And finally, one last component of the effectiveness of an integrated surveillance system is its capacity to evolve and to improve itself through proper evaluation processes. So when planning an evaluation of a surveillance system for EMR and EMU, stakeholders can be interested to evaluate how well the system is contributing to create all these outcomes or only some of them. Also, it can be useful to use this figure to target which evaluation levels are of particular interest for your situation and context. So five evaluation levels can be defined here in relation to this uh, theory of change. And the Coeval AMR online guidance will guide you to find which evaluation tools and approaches are suitable to these evaluation levels. For example, level one evaluation aims at evaluating one health integration across the different components of the surveillance system. This includes the evaluation of the collaboration between stakeholders and organizations, shared governance, as well as integration of different one health components from human, animal, plant, and environmental health in surveillance activities. So if you go um, to the online guidance and you click on level one in the figure presented on the website, you will discover that two tools are particularly interesting to consider if you want to evaluate these aspects of your surveillance system, which are the tool developed by the NEO or the Network for One Health Evaluation and the ECOSUR tool, a tool which focuses on the evaluation of collaboration in surveillance system. So I invite you to explore the online guidance and each evaluation level presented in this figure. And don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions regarding this topic. Thank you.